Hi guys, Dina Parisi here. I come to you from my shop and alongside Stella, my 2013 Cadillac CTSV robot. I'm here to you today for my horsepower and heels driver interview. Uh, it's a driver feature. Uh, rather than writing, I wanted to do a video. So they sent me questions. I will be reading them and answering them. Uh, I thought it would add a little personality, since you know I have none. <laughs> okay, so here goes. Uh, Dina Parisi, name, see, name. <laughs> uh, Dina Parisi is asked, next question is my age. I am 48, for those of you who don't know. 48, I'm willing to sh shout it from the rooftops. I don't really care, it's not a big deal to me. Uh, you know, I think the older I get, the smarter I get, and uh, I'm all about it. You know what? It's it's cool. You know, I stay in good shape, and you know, I try to keep myself looking good. And I uh, I think that with age comes wisdom. So I'm all right with that. Uh, hometown. Uh, right now we live in Pennsylvania. We are in New Freedom, Pennsylvania. We are originally from New York. Uh, anyone who knows Andrew and I knows that we are New Yorkers at heart. It's really kind of just part of our personalities in a good way. Uh, yeah, we're New Yorkers at heart. No disrespect to Pennsylvania because it is a beautiful, beautiful place to live. But we are New Yorkers at heart. Because I could tell you the one thing I am missing is a bacon, egg, and cheese on a Kaiser roll. Yes. Uh... Career and personal background. I have quite an eclectic background. I do, admittedly. I've been a hairdresser for 30 some odd years. Love being in the beauty industry. Part of what I love about the beauty industry is the fact that I can make people feel good about themselves. That was just such a cool job, you know, is for someone to come in and you know, if they had a bad day, if someone passed away in their life or whatever, and just to do their hair and make them feel good about themselves, there was nothing better than that. It was just a very cool, cool industry to be in. And uh, something else that I did in my life for many years was I skated for the Ice Capades, which you can see the sticker right here. Um, they had the, fifth, the uh, 75th anniversary which I, I missed because we were racing. They had a 75th anniversary reunion. I skated for the Ice Capades uh, way back when. It was a few years ago, and uh, that was a big part of my history. Uh, I was a figure skater for many years, a competitive figure skater, and then I skated in the ice show, uh, which is why they have started calling me Showgirl, and if you see my logo, you, you, that's part of who I am. And a big part of my background and I loved it it was a great thing to put on a costume and eyelashes and you know sequins and God, it was just such a great thing to do and and again that was a another way to make people just happy you know that show made people happy and then they left with a smile on their face it was pretty cool so yeah part of who I am so if you didn't know now you know uh, my racing stats, my years in racing. I've been racing now for about 10 years. Uh, I did start in Super Comp, had a beautiful, beautiful silver Camaro. Uh, missed that car. Love that car. She's in a good home now in uh, Connecticut. And uh, we do get to see it every once in a while. And uh, it was about 1,100 horsepower, and that car was beautiful. So, yeah, I missed that car. Um, Motorsport genre class series. Okay, so uh, drag racing. Uh, many of you know I do drag race. A 2013 Cadillac CTSV because every girl from New York needs a 3,000 horsepower Cadillac. Her name is Stella. Uh, there's a good story behind that. I'll, I'll get to that later. And um, I'm right now running the IHRA Crower. Pro Mod series, see that over here, and thanks to Crower for bringing Pro Mod back to IHRA. 
uh, my career highlights. Uh, I have a win in uh, Northeast at La Promade. Uh, right now, I am currently number one in points in IHRA. We have one race left to try to secure a championship. It's going to be tight. I'm only 31 points out. We have one race left in Memphis, uh, October 9th and 10th this year, 2015. Keep your fingers crossed and uh, wish us luck. And uh, so current race car info, as I said, 2000 and, it's a 2013 uh, Cadillac CTSV. Her name is Stella. She is uh, named after my grandma. As I said, every girl from New York needs a 3,000 horsepower Cadillac. My grandma was a redheaded, just like strong Italian woman. So this car being a nice red, we thought Stella would be a fabulous name for her. So that's where she got the name. Uh, what got me interested in racing? <laughs> That's a really good story, and much to my husband's dismay, it's a good story. Uh, uh, Andrew had built the 67 Camaro that I referenced before, and we had gone, uh, he, he originally had built it to show it, and then, you know, we wound up putting a cage in it and all this other stuff, and he said, you know what, I think I'm going to race it. Well, okay, fine. And, you know, I had watched drag racing on TV, you know, when it was on Wide World of Sports, uh, way back when, the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat, for those of you who remember that, and, uh, you know, watching Shirley Muldowney, I, I had watched it, and I had never, but I had never been to a drag race, and the very first race that we went to was Super Chevy at Mabel Grove, I'll never forget it, and I remember standing at the line with our crew chief at the time, who was a friend of ours, Broad, hey, how are you, and, um, and the car kind of got, it just it got out of the groove, got close to the wall, went back straight. And for some reason, <laughs> I fell in love with the sport right at that very instant. And, and that Super Chevy show just made me fall in love with everything about it. I fell in love with the camaraderie. I fell in love with the uh, family aspect. I fell in love with everything about the sport. And... Uh, Brud said to my husband, you are in big trouble. And Andrew said, why? He said, because your wife is just loving this sport. And he's like, oh boy. Well, maybe not even a year later, I went to Frank Hawley Drag Racing School and uh, got my license, got my super gas license. So uh, it's saying, and, and how did I be, begin to break into the sport? I went to Frank Hawley and got my super guest license, and Andrew had built, uh, had begun the build for a 53 uh, Corvette Pro Mod, and when he began the build for the 53, I stepped into the 67 Camaro. So that was how I began to get into the sport. So the next question is, did I have any formal race training? And my formal race training was Frank Hawley which if anyone out there is interested in getting into drag racing, do it the right way. I do suggest go to Frank's school. It, absolutely amazing. Hit, the lectures are great, and you learn so much. I have so much that I take with me every single run. There are things from his lectures that, that steep into my head that I remember and that sit there with me, so I definitely would suggest it. And uh, what type of race training? So back to the same thing. Um, what have been some unique experience I've had as a woman in the sport? Well, I mean, I kind of, I kind of don't really separate being a woman in the sport. I, I kind of like to just be recognized as as a driver. Uh, so there, I think there are so many of us females in the sport now that it's. That's kind of passe. For me, you know, it's funny because people go, you are a figure skater, which that's kind of the cool thing that people, you know, people say, well, that's kind of weird. How did you make that transition? <laughs> um, but, you know, as a female in the sport, I think the best part about it is that at this point, for the most part, nobody really cares. Once that helmet goes on, it's like, oh, it's, you know, the car has no idea that I'm a woman. And for the most part, the competitors don't care either. You know, it's, you know, it's me against them, them against me, and 
whoever gets the stripe first is victorious. That's it. So that's kind of how I feel about it. Um, have I received any tough criticism related to gender? If so, how do I deal with it? You know what? It's pretty rare. I'm finding it's pretty rare at this point. Um, for the most part, every once in a while, I, I do, I have one instance that comes to mind that actually, okay, it was a funny story. Um, if you know me, I don't, you know, very, fan reaction to, like, for the most part, the fans are so wonderful. Fans are great. Racers are great. Every once in a while, though, there will be that Neanderthal with his, you know, with the scabs on his hands because his knuckles are still dragging on the ground. Very rare, but it does happen. I never want to be rude to anybody. I'll let them say what they have to say. It's fine. But I did have this one guy, and he was a little relentless. So, uh, and you know, Andrew kind of likes to sit back and watch things happen. And my husband, Andrew, it, he likes to sit back and watch things happen because you know, I temper everything with humor because it's kind of a way for me to not be rude to someone and then yet let them know that they're not being appropriate. <laughs> so I kind of had this guy, and I wrote a blog about it, and the, the blog was pretty funny. And he he kind of was circling the car like he was like like he was circling his prey. <laughs> and he did say, it, he did say to me, you know, don't you think this is a little too much power for you? You know, you're, you're a, a little thing because I'm five feet tall. And I said, well, considering it's the second one that I've owned and this one has added power from the first one, I said, well, no. And he began to throw out, you know, he began to throw out things about horsepower and blah, 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 that really he kind of had no idea what he was talking about. I let him go, let him say what he wanted to say, and his friends were behind him just uh, giggling, which made it even funnier, and then he started to talk about the supercharger on the car, but referred to it as a procharger. Well, right there, then, I had a laugh, so I let him continue on. I, I probably gave him a little bit more leverage than I should have, or a little bit more leeway, and then, you know, finally I looked at him and I said, you know, I could probably put you in the car and let you start it up and give you one whop on the throttle and send you home crying to your mama. And, well, his friends just kind of dispersed in fits of laughter. And he just kind of looked at me and turned around and walked away. And normally I would never say anything like that, but he, I think at that point he really kind of understood that it was not cool. And he really didn't say anything, and then he realized. And I heard his friends whispering to him later on and pointing at the supercharger saying, that's a supercharger. <laughs> Maybe you have to be there, but it was quite funny. And I, I'm hoping that next time it, he'll be a little bit more respectful to the ladies in the staging lanes and understand that they are um, good at what they do. That's all. Uh, how much involvement do I have in my racing program? Uh, driver, owner, crew responsibilities. Well, um, I am the driver. Obviously, you got that part. Uh, I am the owner. It's Dina Parisi Racing. I am the owner. My husband, Andrew, is my car chief. Uh, he, his responsibility, my responsibilities are, of course, as the owner of the team, he'll come to me with everything. But his responsibilities are just immense. I mean, he is a one-man band. I, I can't say enough about him. Just getting everything together in the shop, it's all him. I mean, he's taking care of this by himself. It's a lot. It's, it's a lot. Uh, when we get to the track, we have uh, Butch Branzell helps him uh, with all of the crew duties. And then uh, Quain Stott uh, has been has been tuning for us and doing a fabulous job. Uh, I have been not so good on my driving abilities this year. Uh, we made a, quite a few changes with this car. It was a brand new car. We made some changes and I was 
lacking. Uh, you know, I'm, I've made, we're lucky to be in first right now. It's going to be close. Uh, and I've made some mistakes this year. You know, I'm kicking myself for some mistakes that I've made. Quain's been right on the money. Um, Car's been running great with him around and with Andrew and Butch taking care of everything on the other side. So, you know, it's on me right now. You know, I, I need to do my job. I need to get up off my rump and do my job. So I have a lot of work to do in Memphis. Um, and was there any non-racing related training I received that helped make me successful? Well, I mean, you know, going to the gym and, um, you know, keeping yourself fit, it really does help. You have to, plus working the tree at home, that, that's, that's a big help. That's something that we really need to work on. Um, biggest roadblocks I've had to overcome to break into my career as a racer. Well, I mean, we were able to break into the career that thankfully we were able to do. Uh, the issue right now is funding. I, you know, us and probably eight gazillion other teams, uh, funding is an issue right now. Uh, we're needing to finish out the year, of course. Uh, we want to win this championship and then look right to 2016. We're already working on 2016 and just hoping that we have the funding. We know we're good representatives for what we do. Uh, I know I'm good at what I do. I came out of the entertainment industry, so, you know, uh, I know how to do what I need to do. That's it. It's pretty simple. Um, if I have children, I do not. Anyone who knows us knows Bella, the Wonder Pug. <laughs> She's the, the Dina Parisi Racing PR Pug. Um, we do not have children, but uh, how does the sport or sponsors view commitments to family? Does it make it more difficult? Well. Um, we don't have children, but we are a family team. It's my husband and myself for the most part. You know, it's really, it, Andrew and I have built this from scratch. Uh, it's been he and I from the get-go. Uh, it's, it's been a fight. It's been a struggle. And, um, you know, as far as when it comes to children, you know, we've always been supporters of the junior, um, junior directs program. So, you know, Bella even has her own junior director stroller. She has a little stroller that has willy bars and a parachute on the back. So, you know, we're all about the kids as well, even though we don't have any. So, you know, that's that's definitely a big thing. I mean, our junior director races are our races of tomorrow. So even though we don't have kids, we, we want to support them too. Uh, having experienced success, what things did I learn along the way? And what would be useful to another woman who is looking to start or further her career in motorsports. You know what? I really one thing I can say is don't give up. I mean, there have been days where I was just I throw my hands up to the whole thing. I'm like, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've just said, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. And then I breathe, go to the gym, ride the bike, go, oh, okay. Cleared my head. I'm good. And, you know, get back and do it again. So, you know, I just, you, you can't give up. You, you can't give up. And for those younger racers out there, here's what I'm going to tell you. The scantily clad photos, not good. I'm sorry. I, I have to go there. I think that we, I think we all need to remember that, you know, we have to, we have to respect ourselves. You know, we can't utilize certain things about ourselves to, to get further in, in, in our lives. We ha I think we have to, we have to say, hey, you know, we're, we're talented at what we do and use our, use our talent, not our talent. Make sense? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I went there. Because <laughs> I'm not afraid to go there. I went there. Ladies, respect yourselves. I'm sorry, I'm all about it. My future plans and goals. Well, right now, the immediate future, 
is to try to win a championship. That's the, the most important thing right now, the immediate future, try to win a championship. IHRA, Crower Pro Mod, try to win a championship. I uh, want to thank all of our marketing partners because they have been so wonderful to us and supported us. And, uh, you know, and we, 2016, I want to race. I want to race. So anyone looking to support a team that's just been scraping it and getting by and just continuously working hard, here we are. Dina Parisi Racing, see? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a believer in, you know, on and off track and, uh, you know, dinaparisiracing.com. Take a look at us and, uh, you know, hey, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that uh, we will see you guys out at the track and, you know, keep up with us. Wish us luck. October 8th and 9th. Uh, no, 9th and 10th, sorry. October 9th and 10th, IHRA Finals, Memphis. Be there. <laughs>